today's video, Pat and I are gonna teach you, well, Pat's gonna do most of the teaching, I'm gonna do a lot of the demoing of how to climb a rope efficiently. So I know I've seen a lot of people in our classes using so much energy trying to go up and down the ropes where we can make that a lot more efficient, save our energy and use that in the other parts of the workout and also make climbing a rope a little bit more enjoyable. So he's gonna take you through a step-by-step -step progression of some drills and some specific things you guys can be doing to work on your rope climbs and work on your foothold because that's gonna be one of the most important pieces other than having the strength to get up the rope. So let's get started. All right, guys, so there's a lot of ways to climb a rope, but we're only going to go over one of those today because I think it's superior to all the rest. Um, I see a lot of people, whether they're in the gym or quite frankly, people who are even pretty competent at climbing a rope, wasting a lot of energy trying to use ways that uh, just I don't think are are very technically sound or efficient getting up and down and most of that has to do with the footwork but we're also going to go through a bunch of drills to where you can improve that kind of step by step without having to just climb up and down the rope a bunch of times all right so the first thing that we're going to do is talk about our foot position with the rope and what we're doing with it around our feet and really the easiest way to do that is to have a box so Chrissy's going to jump up on here and sit down and this kind of takes out our body weight out of it and we can practice our footwork and look down at what we're doing with our feet without having to worry about balancing or swinging from the rope while we're hanging. So the first thing that she's gonna do is she's going to go outside of her foot, then she's gonna come underneath and grab the rope on top of this one, then lift it above her other foot and think about stomping on her shoelaces. And that's gonna be our foot position. A lot of people have a tendency to wanna to squeeze the rope, but we have a hard time creating a lot of pressure with that. So if I was just standing here on the ground with my feet, it doesn't matter how hard I squeeze my feet together, I cannot create very much pressure in. What I can create a ton of pressure doing is stomping on my other foot. I can create an incredible amount of pressure that is not gonna be broken and doesn't require a lot of strength to do. So the byproduct of that is that the rope gets pinched. It's not the focus of what I'm trying to do. So when she gets back in this position, what she's doing is stomping on her foot and because she can create pressure there, it creates a pinch for the rope just naturally. And it's way stronger than pinching the rope in any one direction or wrapping it around or any of the other things that people do. I would not re recommend that one. But um, because of that wedge, it takes very little energy and it's actually a ton of support. So from that position, it largely takes our hands out of it and our hands become more of a balance than they are doing work. So if you're ever needing a break from doing a rope climb, it should only be because your heart rate's high or you just feel like you need a break. There should never be any muscle fatigue doing a rope climb with your feet. So something else to think about when you're doing this foot position is that we don't necessarily want our pressure going down onto our feet. We almost want to create a wedge. So when I get into my rope climbing position and I'm standing on my shoelace, that's what I'm thinking about. I don't want my knees together. What really makes this strong is me torquing my knees out. So when I torque my knees out, it creates a, a V-shaped wedge onto the rope and is much more stable. Um, so that's what creates a really strong pinch. And that pinch is because of my feet being smashed together, not trying to pinch the rope. Guys, so I'm gonna show you the, the amount of support that that position can hold for you guys. I can get my feet in that position and actually take my hands off the rope. So if I get into that position, I can let go with my hands and it is supportive enough that I don't need to be pulling with my arms. My arms become a balance point. And from there, all I have to think about is squatting to stand up, grabbing with my arms, reaching my legs up as high as I possibly can, re-getting in that position, and now my legs are doing all of the work again. So you're really inchworming up the rope. It's feet up, back to that position, squat and stand, grab the rope again. It is very minimal with anything that you're doing with your grip or your shoulders, your hands. Um, and then that moves us on to our next point. So from that position, if my feet and my hands are very close right now, that gives me a ton of distance to be able to close the rope and it, or to cover on the rope. And it's also a good way that I could come down the rope if I wanted to as well. So you can reverse this just as easily as you can go up. So from here, if I'm in my squat position here, now I'm standing on my feet, walking up, back into that position, walking my hands up, and I can do that same process coming back down. So that does work both ways, going up and down the rope in a very secure way. So if that's ever a concern for you where you get up there and it feels a little bit insecure, practicing this down on the ground is a way to be very comfortable and secure whether you're up, up high or anywhere on the rope. All right, so we'll circle back to some footwork and some drills with that, but our next point to getting up the rope is gonna be our jump. Something that we see a lot is that people will go, they'll do a great big jump, and then they'll more or less reach right out in front of them, which is not very efficient and doesn't necessarily get you anywhere. 
So the reason we jump is to get as far up the rope and extend as, as much as we can. So no matter how high I jump, if I'm grabbing in front of my face, it doesn't give me very much distance for me to lift my feet up. So what I'm doing by jumping and grabbing with a straight arm is I'm giving myself the most distance to lift my feet up and I want my feet as close to my hands as I can so that then when I stand, I can cover the most amount of ro room getting to the top of the rope. So to kind of show you guys this in full motion, I'm not even as concerned about the height of the jump, more so the extension and catching with straight arms. So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like and the distance that we can cover with a straight arm grab. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit of an idea that even if I'm not necessarily jumping high, if I'm covering a lot of distance with my body, I can get up the rope if I'm fresh in about a pull and a half. It doesn't even take two and I'm not the tallest person. So efficiency makes a lot of difference here as well as other things in CrossFit. All right, this is one of our favorite drills. What we've done is we've wrapped a pull-up bar or we've wrapped a rope around the pull-up bar. And what we're gonna do is Christy's gonna jump up into um, a hanging position on the bar with the rope in between our feet. And what this gives us a chance to do is practice our footwork without swinging around the rope. So we have a stable pull-up bar that's not gonna move. She's gonna wrap her feet, stand, and do a pull-up, come back down. So a lot of times people can, once they get comfortable with the box situation, finding that foot position, this gives them a chance to actually do it while they're hanging. But what it takes away is the swinging around on the rope and the grip position. So it's a very stable way to hold find and practice your footwork to where ideally we don't even have to look down at our feet it becomes second nature all right guys a couple things that i wanted to share with you so rope climbs for me i used to hate them i actually remember 2015 regionals tommy v was announced and it had 1296 rope climbs in it and i cried that week because i was like i'm never gonna make it up the rope that many times um, but one thing that really really helped me this box drill getting the hang of your footwork and then two don't rush your rope climbs. So like Pat said, I do agree with him to where eventually you want it to become second nature, but I think it's really worthwhile to take an extra half of a second, look down at your feet, make sure you have a solid foothold instead of trying to rush yourself up the rope and feeling like your feet are sliding down because you didn't take that half a second to set your feet where they should be. So a lot of times in class, what I see is people just eyes up and they're not even, they don't know where the rope is but they're still trying to climb up, so they're just missing that rope. So what I would recommend is like Pat talked about, nice long arms, lats are engaged, midline's nice and tight. Take a half of a second to make sure we find the rope and we are set. Now my knees come forward, I stay close to the rope and I climb my way up. So just by taking that half of a second, you're gonna get a solid foothold and make sure we aren't wasting any extra energy trying to get up and down the rope. So don't rush your climbs, be patient with yourself. And remember, to bring our knees up, we wanna lean back. But as soon as we set our feet, we wanna pull ourselves close to the rope so we're not still far away from it. All right, so something else to kind of elaborate on within the footwork, you definitely do, we are encouraging you guys to lean back and pull your feet up. But once you do have your hip positioning, or your foot, your foot positioning, you wanna pull your feet back under your hips. So that will allow you to stand and do an inchworm back up the rope. So when we grab it, I'm gonna grab into my position, my feet come up as high as possible and they're nice out in front of me. Then I'll pull them under my hips and then I get to stand. So once they are out, it's okay to be in this position. I've got long arms under my hips, then stand. All right, so we talked about coming up the rope and we've kind of touched on coming down. And the safest, most secure way is literally just reversing what we did to get up. It's super secure. You've always got two, two points of contact on the rope um, and it's a very safe way to come down, but it's also a little bit slower, kind of inchworming back down. The other way to come down, which I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of people do is where they just kind of slide back down. Um, and what we want to be able to do is create enough friction with our feet to slow us down, but not so much that it's going to burn our hands, whether we are going hand over hand or kind of letting go and sliding down. So when we do that, or when you see people do that, what happens is we go from this position to this position. And typically I will have my, this foot higher. And what we're doing is creating friction with the rope. So the closer my feet are together, the slower I'm going to go. The further my feet are apart, the faster that I'm gonna go. And I've always got kind of a backup where I can pinch my foot, 
and that becomes a break and kind of a safety if I do end up going too fast. All right, we hope this video has been super helpful. One major tip that I wanna share with you guys is we don't want rope burn because that hurts really bad and it's gonna prevent you from wanting to go up and down the rope anymore. So I typically like to wear tights. Um, also, the foot that you're wrapping, so it's gonna go outside of our shin like we showed. We typically will put a knee sleeve right here, a high sock, whatever you can, because you don't wanna have that rope crossing over your bare skin, or it's gonna create, I have a small one actually, where I didn't wear one, a little bit of a rope burn. So make sure whichever foot that is your dominant foot that you're wrapping around, you put some sort of high sock on. Play out, try out both feet. I cannot wrap my left foot, it doesn't feel natural. So it's gonna be dependent for you, whichever feels more natural more natural. Um, but we hope you guys really enjoyed this video. This is something we've been wanting to cover for a long time as people are starting to get back into their gyms. I know rope climbs for some people is like, oh, I have the strength, I just can't get up and down the rope, or I have one and then I can't do anymore. Um, that's probably because we're not using our foothold the way we should be. So we slow mode some stuff. Um, I know we kind of went through it, but definitely replay this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments as we would love to answer those for you. And if you get your first rope climb, make sure to tag Ibex Training, tag Patrick, tag myself, because we would love to see it. Um, smash the like button as always. Please subscribe if you liked this video and you want to see more like it. And I hope you guys have a great day. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.